Hello there! Welcome to this tutorial. Let's get a general overview on the newest Fruity Loop Studio 20 by ImageLine. Leave us comments and suggestions below this video to improve our next video guides dedicated to this software. FL Studio is one of the best professional digital audio workspace software available on the market, used to create customized audio projects, make beats and recordings, and apply outstanding adjustments and effects you like most. In this video, we are going to see how to start with its important features, but you may need additional practice and experience to start creating advanced projects. FL Studio opens on its main workspace, divided in several parts. At the very top, you have the toolbar, showing the main options, the player, and basic information on your project. On the left, you have the browser panel, collecting samples, effects, plugins, and ready templates to use. The rest of the workspace is totally free and welcomes all the windows used to edit and preview your project that can be moved and placed where you like. In case you have any of these windows closed, you can reopen these by using the buttons on the toolbar. In addition, you can check the Hint panel placed on the top left corner for more helpful and information on any tool or button you hover with your cursor. This is quite useful when you start as a beginner. Before we start creating a new project, let's understand how this works. An FL Studio project is made by several compositions called patterns, placed, repeated, and edited inside the playlist window. Then, each of these patterns is a collection of channels arranged in rows, which can be audio samples, melodies, beats, or voice recordings. All the patterns with their channels are managed and edited inside the channel rack window. To realize the project, you usually start with the creation of the first patterns, and then check how the project is going by placing these patterns and the following ones into the playlist window until the final output sound looks good and is ready to be exported. Now, let's see all you need to start with your first project. To create a new project, go to File and then to New. This starts with a single pattern called Pattern 1, shown on the channel rack with four default channels used to make beats. Kick, Clap, Hat, and Snare. Each of these channels shows its name on the left and several buttons called Steps on the right that you can turn on by clicking on these and turn off by right-clicking. In this way, you decide when the channel should play without losing the basic rhythm throughout the project. To check the output sound from the pattern in progress, you can play back by using either the space key, the play button at the top of the channel rack, or the other play button on the main player on top with the orange pattern mode button enabled. All the channels of the pattern are played in loop, which is quite useful to check the effect of your changes live and rapidly. The main player measures time in bars, beats, and ticks, according to the standard music format. You can change it in seconds by clicking on it. Whereas, the speed rate of your overall project is set by the tempo, measured in beats per minute. To learn more about the standard music format and the tempo, check out our dedicated links in the video description. You can also use the swing bar on top to adjust the channel hits, especially when you get steps very close to each other. By default, the pattern is one full bar long, made by 16 steps in total. Groups of four steps create a beat with alternated colors. You can increase the pattern duration by clicking and dragging its right edge first, and then enabling at least one step on the new region. You can add other channels by using the plus button below and then choosing the plugin to use. 
These can be interactive generators or synthesizers, used to set and adjust the channel sound. Some of these are a single hit, such as the percussions. Some others are sound loops one full bar long. Moreover, you can use the browser panel to look for several ready samples to use inside your pattern. Under Packs and MISC, you have ready samples and loops. Under Impulses, you find everything for the beats. Under Channel Presets, Generators and Synths to create your own customized channel sound. And under Speech, several amazing vocal recordings. You can also add new channels by dragging and dropping any of your audio files from your computer directly to the channel rack. In this case, the single step enabled plays the whole file entirely. So make sure not to have closed steps enabled or you will get sound overlapped. Now, let's see how to edit each channel inside the pattern. Right-click on a channel name to rename, color, give a proper icon, or delete it. If you click on the channel name, you can check its sound waveform and adjust any of its properties. Pay attention that the interface can change deeply depending on the sample or plugin used for the channel. On the left side, you get a green light used to mute or unmute the current channel. Close to it, you have two knobs. The first one adjusts the panning used to balance the left and right stereo outputs, whereas the second knob is used to set the channel volume. An entire project is made by several patterns, each collecting different kinds of sound. Usually, there is one dedicated to vocals, others to the beats, and others to the melodies. To create a new pattern, just click on the plus button below the player and type the name for it. The channel rack shows just one pattern per time that you can choose from the Patterns list inside the right arrow below the player. Remember that all the patterns inside a project do share the same identical channels list. What changes between them is the channel steps are on and off and the overall pattern duration in bars. You can rename, clone, or delete the selected pattern right next to the Patterns list below the main player. The direct steps from the channel rack are a very easy and fast way to create patterns from channels. But in case you need to adjust the tone and the properties for each single step, you have to use the piano roll window that you can open through the second button on top. This window opens the selected channel shown on top in a more extended workspace that allows to choose the proper tone or note for each channel hit including its properties, its time duration, and also allows to apply overlapping hits. You have a keyboard on the left with rows representing each note and then columns separating bars, beats, and ticks through time. For some other channels made by synthesizers, the keyboard can change, showing several instruments composing the channel sound. We won't see these in this beginner tutorial. Steps turned on from the channel rack are shown as short impulses at the row note C5, taken as default, which plays the whole channel sound until it lasts. These assume a light green color if these are related to the selected channel on top. You can click and slide each impulse where you like through time or on different rows to change the tone according to the note chosen. In addition, you can use the Draw tool to place notes with a defined duration in time. In respect to the impulses, the notes play the channel as much as they last in time. You can adjust their duration by clicking and dragging from their edges 
holding down the alternate key to avoid snappings to the columns. Click and drag them to move in time or change their tone, shown through a letter representing the note and a number indicating the octave. To remove impulses and notes, just right-click on them. To zoom in and out, use your mouse wheel while holding down the control key. Once you add notes on the channel, the channel rack changes its preview, showing the step impulses as green triangles and notes as rectangles. While composing with the piano roll, it can be useful to play back specific parts in loop. If you right-click and drag on the timeline on top, you will create a red loop region that highlights and selects the part of the pattern to play back. The piano roll is also used to customize the audio output of each step, note, or the whole channel with the control section below. Click on Control to pick the property to customize. If you choose under Note Properties, you can use the Draw tool to adjust the property value for each step or note. You can also double-click on these to open the full set of properties directly. If you choose under Channel Controls, use the Draw tool to set the property over the whole channel tick after tick or without snappings by keeping the alternate key down. While working on your project, remember to save it often with Control and S. FL Studio projects are saved as .flp files, storing anything from patterns to properties and step positions. Once the first patterns are made, you can put them together and create your project with the playlist window. Here, you have the main timeline on top in bars and beats, and several rows, or tracks, overlapping in time. First of all, choose the pattern either from the list on the left or at the top, and then enable the Draw tool to paste it. This shows up with a great preview of all the notes and controls applied from the channel rack or the piano roll. As seen on the piano roll, you can click and drag the patterns to move them, stretch their edges to adjust their duration, and right-click on them to delete them. You can also move multiple patterns together by selecting them first and then dragging them. You can select all of them by holding the control key down and clicking and dragging on the workspace until you cover all the patterns to select. The playlist content is indeed your final project content. You can play back by using either the play button on top or the main player directly, this time in song mode. You can also use the red loop region to loop a selected part continuously. On the playlist window, you can also turn on and off each track with its content by using its green button. You can also use the Playback tool to play back just the interested pattern. You can also adjust the overall output volume and pitch of your whole project audio by using the two knobs next to the player. The browser window does not collect just useful samples and loops to import, but also lists the full content of your project, such as all its patterns, effects, channel generators, and even all the actions made under history that can be used to undo and go backwards. Another fundamental window is the mixer that is used to balance all the channels inside the project, add effects, and apply audio filters. Check out our guide to discover more about the mixer. Once your project is ready, you can export it by going to File, Export, and then choosing the file format. Then type the name and the destination folder and use the Render panel to adjust all the remaining options. Under Mode, choose whether to export the selected pattern or the whole playlist content with full song. 
More below, set the file format, bit depth, and quality options. Moreover, if you open the render panel with a red loop region built, you can choose Song Selection under Mode to render just the selected piece in red color. When you are ready, start rendering by clicking on Start. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Check out our full and free guide dedicated to FL Studio 20 to discover more advanced features.